Hello my friends and welcome, this is the latest update from Ukraine. As you know, Russia started to gain some of the ground recently, but at the same time the attack brings lots of the losses for them personally. Well, today they performed two of the big attacks with the large reinforcements and all of them were ambushed. Yes, they took the ground in Marinka and they also tried to move near to Novomihailovka over here south from Marinka. This is also very important hotspot. They advanced through this road towards this village but unsuccessfully. As usual, they formed a big, large convoy with many tanks and infantry vehicles and Ukrainian artillery plus FPV drones were ready for this move. So this is the road and you already see what is happening. The Ukrainian artillery fire on the Russian positions. Here are their vehicles over there. So this is the artillery fire and those are the Russian vehicles. They have many of them they had. My friends, I'll publish the battle video on my Telegram channel because here it might be blocked. Here you may see just some of the photos of the destroyed or damaged Russian vehicles. As you can see, they tried to mask their tanks, but it doesn't help. This tank got some minor damages. You can see the light smoke coming from it, so probably it might be repaired in the future. And this one was used as the first tank for the assault. It has the anti-mine plug on the front and also it sustained just minor damages. It's not completely ruined. However, as you can see, some of the armor vehicles, I think it's BMP-3 or maybe BMP-2. And this one I'm out of clue because of the destruction. So they were completely lost for the Russian army, probably together with infantry forces. One more tank this time. Total Caputa had to put some of the censorship over here. So this was the place where the turret should be attached to the tank and was attached, but something went wrong with the tank, it got sick. This Russian tank I believe mostly intact, however you may see the damage to the grill on the top and here is the black part, so probably the turret was finally penetrated. I think that it is the T-72B3 tank with the modern looking armor, relict on the sides and also the modern armor of the turret, but it didn't help. Here it's hard to say what it was, probably the tank, because I believe that this is the part of the demining plug. It is the Soviet-made standard MTLB with no extra weaponry on the top. Miraculously, it's in one piece, probably was abandoned after some fire. And this is really hard to say. You may see that partially here we have snow, here we also have some of the white spots and here we may also see the white on top of the tank. Here we may see the white things on the ground, here as well here as well and here too. I believe that it was the early morning attack by the Russian soldiers since we have this build up on the grass. Usually it melts. Well, actually depends on the temperature during the daytime too. And if you watch the video that I'll publish on my Telegram channel, you'll see that everything is legit. This is the single Russian attack. In this area, Ukraine has quite a robust defense. 79th Paratroop Division is protecting this territory against the Russian attacks quite successfully. The other place where Russia tried to perform their offensive actions is near to Kupensk. We're speaking about the village of Sinkivka. So this is Kupensk and this is Sinkivka. Russia performed the full-scale attack using lots of the vehicles and I think that they reached this village because the fighting wasn't going just over there with infantry forces. This image was filmed on Ukrainian drone, so here you may see lots of the Russian vehicles in this area. They used many of them together with tanks. Based on the buildings over here, I believe they reached Sinkivka after all. Well, they reached the place with their vehicles, but later on they landed their forces, infantry forces, and decided to camp back with their vehicles because they were spotted and the Ukraine opened the artillery fire on those positions. Several vehicles were damaged and they decided to retreat under artillery fire from the Ukrainian side, but soldiers were fighting against each other in Sinkivka village. Here Ukrainian army prevailed and we got rid of all of the Russian invaders 
in this attack attempt that they performed. Well, still, this one was not as successful as in previous case because Russia secured their vehicles, their tanks. At the proper time, they start to retreat from their positions. And I believe that Ukraine wasn't really ready for this sort of the attack on Sinkivka village because the artillery job was not that great compared to the previous case. However, it still was there. Probably local guys are in like of the FPV drones. Yet this particular video doesn't allow us to obtain the full information of what happened exactly at this case. Probably Russia finally was able to gain the control over Sengivka or what, because the video interrupts at some point. However, clearly we saw that Russia retreated their vehicles from the position. I'll share everything on my Telegram group, so there you are free to check it out yourself. Russia continued to perform crazy stunts, so here is the Grad rocket artillery system of their side together with Sukhoi 25 attack airplane and they fly together. Interesting, but Grad missed the airplane in that case. Well, actually there was the recorded case of the Grad system which targeted the Russian helicopter, their own Grad system. So I'm very surprised that they still do this stunt stuff after that case. All right, it seems like Russia also wants to get Krinky under control. They continue their failed attempts to reach this village. The intensity of the fights is very strong over there. By the way, today there was the press conference of Vladimir Putin, where he said that Russia lost few of the soldiers near to Krinky, as well as Ukraine, just few. But actually it's not true. Russia already lost more than 1000 soldiers on the other shore of the Dnieper river. So today they advanced with some of the forces but immediately were ambushed by Ukrainian FPV drones and those are the remains of their previous convoy that was ambushed before. Nevertheless Russia continued to use their aviation bombs, artillery and many other stuff on Krinky. As I say to you, the intensity of the fight is very strong out there. Ukraine still keeps the troops over there, but we cannot continue this for a long time. Otherwise, there will be totally demolished with the help of the Russian aviation gliding bombs. So we need to move further or to go back to Ukrainian controlled territory. There is simply no other way out because the majority of the buildings unfortunately were ruined by the Russian artillery and aviation bombs, so there is no place to hide for our guys. So we need to go forward or go back. To the other parts of the front line, so you understand that Marinka was taken by the Russian army. We have the latest update that the northern part also was taken by Russians. The Ukrainian army defended the place for a very long time, but finally Russia has more resources which they put to get this place under control and they also start or continue their assault towards Stepova. Recently Ukraine was able to repel all the Russian attacks over here. Our guys conducted the counter-offensive trying to push Russian army behind the railroad. It was the second attempt to do it. At first it was successful but later on Russia started move their forces once again and unfortunately they moved taking the ground near Stepova. So in a couple of days we have this movement so probably they'll finally take Stepova under control continue moving to Berdichi over here but they need actually to move to this place to industrial area to cut the supply road for Ukrainian army. However, they are unable to do it because of the Ukrainian resistance in this factory. It is very strong out there, so they hesitate to use their forces. And actually, they are unable to move there with their tanks, armor vehicles, so only infantry should be used in industrial part of the city. And one more, Russia took control over the hill, which was liberated just recently by Ukrainian army. Our guys put the flag on the hill, but Russia sent more forces 
and they retake the control. Before it was the Ukrainian small or short operation towards the hill. Our guys imprisoned some of the Russian soldiers and came back immediately. Later on, Russia took out the Ukrainian flag from the hill. That's it for now. Many of the media sources reported about two of the significant strikes, one in Mariupol, the other one in Berdansk. From what I know, at least in Mariupol, the Russian base was attacked. It is based in the cement factory, which is now out of order. I think that it was the response on the Russian attacks that happened this day. Russia used many of the Kinzhal rockets and other ballistic missiles to target Ukrainian cities and also military bases. They aim towards Helmelnitsky airfield. Yet we don't have the confirmation whether they were successful targeting the military airport. And this is the Mariupol Russian base from the close perspective. All right, about the military help from the United States that we crucially need. Well, we have no deal for now because Congress went on holiday celebrations. So it seems like, after all, the border control is not that important for Republicans to be solved as soon as possible. You know, actually, I tried to find the open information about their project, about the migration crisis in the United States, the border control, step by step, but it's not publicly available in Internet. Very strange. So what are their demands? I'm out of clue. What they want to put to approve together with Ukrainian and Israeli military support. Hmm. I believe that after all, Republicans are not openly working for Putin against Ukraine, but they follow their political preferences, I guess. This sort of the game before the presidential elections next year. The bad thing that Ukraine is involved into those games. So at the same time, then our guys are just freezing in the trenches under the Russian fire without the full military support. Senators just want to celebrate the Christmas. It is more important for the national security of the United States for them. At the same time, the Democratic Party leader Schumer says that Senate will resume operation next week after a holiday and will continue to talk about Ukraine and border control of the United States. So we have lots of the information coming about this political drama around Senate, Congress, uh, Presidents, whatever. Honestly, guys, I never like politics or politicians because of those cases. They try to solve their own issues. They are not looking at the human lives after all, they don't really care. They care more about their ratings rather than the real actions. But after all, I think that military support of Ukraine also helps to support the United States itself because the vast majority of all of the funds go back to the United States budget. The production of the weaponry creates the new jobs in the United States. Plus, the United States of America sent mostly the old equipment to Ukraine and they produce the new one, renewing their army, making it more capable. All right, some good news for Ukraine. The European Council has decided to open a session negotiations with Ukraine and Moldova to join the European Union. Awesome move, but at the same time, President Zelensky wasn't invited over there because the Council or European leaders, let's say, afraid about some escalation from the Hungary side from Viktor Orban. So basically, we have just a single country blackmailing all of the European Union about Ukrainian topic. They want just money from the European Union, which are now blocked because Hungary is in lack of democracy in its institutions. So we have the information about it from Politica. Zelensky didn't receive the invitation to EU summit because of Orban. So all of those political importance, I call them afraid of the single dictator Orban. Yes, I image generator works perfectly for this guy. The Guardian says that Viktor Orban left the hall after the European leaders started to vote for a Ukrainian deal. Awesome. <laughs> Again shows the true face of this character. So today Putin gave the big press conference 
Actually, it is the theater that was planned before. The pro-Russian bloggers say that, oh my god, just read the comments that people write on SMS and later they are shown on a big screen. So, for example, why is your reality is not the same with ours, people ask. Or why after you cross the carriage bridge, the mobile network goes to roaming, so Crimea is Russia or not. Then the war is going to be over, then the peace talks should start. But all of that was filtered by the president's office and later shown to state that they have some certain democracy and freedom of speech. Moreover, they understand the mood of the crowd, so they need to release some of the vapor from this pan. Believe me, if they let the true comments from people on the screen, those would not be that polite towards Putin. So it was clearly planned, just few of those kind of the controversial comments were allowed to be shown on this screen. Mostly the majority of the comments were for approval of the Putin's actions. So what is the most interesting stuff that Putin is said about? Well, first of all, he admitted the Russian losses in Ukraine. He said about the current group of the Russian army in Ukraine and the mobilized soldiers that Russia was able to hire, also volunteers. He said only about the regular Russian armed forces, no any Wagner group or Storm Z private battalions, whatever. So the number of the soldiers currently in Ukraine, 617,000, quite a lot. I thought the number is 400 with something, but 617,000, that's a lot. He said about the forcefully mobilized soldiers, 244 plus volunteers, 486 plus the Russian army group in Ukraine, 250,000 at the beginning of the full-scale war. So with the current group available in Ukraine and knowing that there are no any rotations, no any demobilizations for the regular Russian army soldiers, Russia lost 363,000 soldiers in Ukraine. With those numbers, Putin admitted it. This number is huge. Just yesterday, analytics said about 315,000 soldiers, while today Putin said even bigger number. On the press conference, he also confirmed his bias about the military support of Ukraine. He says that the Western countries little by little are tired of this war and will support Ukraine less and less. So that is his goal, to continue to produce more weaponry, to mobilize more Russian men. He said that there will be no future mobilization in Russia, but it's fake, there will be after elections. So Russia is already getting ready for the long-term war. And sadly, I may admit that partially he is right. We are losing the support, especially from the United States of America. If someone said me half a year ago that we might have those problems in Congress, with Senate, oh, I wouldn't believe it. Even then this political crisis started a few months ago, I expected it to last just for a few weeks, but now we see that it's the deep problem. So Putin highlighted there, and actually it's the confirmation of his bias. It encourages him to do what he does in Ukraine, unfortunately. By the way, today with his press conference, Russia launched the new attack on Ukrainian territory, as I say to you, targeting military airfield as well. But Russia is unable to last in the current state for the very long time. In a few years, it will start to collapse for sure, because it's collapsing right now. Many of the people, especially those who live outside Moscow, are terrified about the living conditions they faced with. The tremendous inflation in the country, lack of everything, so I should film the separate video about it. After mainly unsuccessful counteroffensive operation that Ukraine performed this summer, Ukraine now goes for total defense. General Naive today stated that Ukraine is building more defense lines on the northern border of our country, for example, in Chernigiv Oblast. Similar to the defense lines that Russia built on the south of Ukraine, with lots of the trenches and dragon teeth. Honestly saying, it should have been done even before the full-scale intervention of the Russian Federation, 
last year. Because Russia is quite unpredictable and it already started the war against Ukraine back in 2014. Well, after all, I think it's better late than never. Britain officials say that Russia wants to mobilize 170,000 more soldiers into their army. After all, I think that those could be Russian volunteer soldiers not forcibly mobilized. Because not a long time ago, Russia increased the salary for those types of the soldiers. And now they earn quite a lot until they live. The Build source publishes the information about the possible Russian assault in 2024 till 2026. So the plan for Russia for the next year is to occupy all of the Luhansk and Donetsk Oblast. Later on they want to go to Dnipro and to Kharkiv. I think Kharkiv from this direction as they thought before. At the same time Russia has no plans to go to Kherson from this shore. And also they want to capture Zaporizhia. The article says that it would be okay for Russia to lose 100,000 soldiers KAA per year. Well, those are about the same losses that they have, for example, this year. Yes, exactly. Right now they have tremendous losses in Avdivka, but before they had less losses compared to what is happening now. Well, honestly, I don't think that this plan is real for the Russian Federation based on the movement they currently have. To achieve that, they need to mobilize more than a million men into their army, because we are speaking about the major cities of Ukraine. Those are not easy to take and they will lose hundreds of thousands of the soldiers trying to reach those surpassing 100,000 losses per year for sure. So maybe 1 million and a half totally would be enough and it's also under the question at the same time they might lose half a million soldiers for this total operation. Yes, Ukraine might also have losses, but defending side usually loses much less compared to offending side. For example, in Avdivka, Ukraine loses 12 times less forces compared to the Russian Federation. And something tells me that with the current Russian military army command, this operation is simply not possible. They managed to get all of that under their control just because Ukraine wasn't prepared for it. Now Ukraine is prepared. The Ukrainian drone was captured by Ukrainian police. It was used to deliver the cigarettes from Ukraine to Hungary. The difference in price for cigarettes between Ukraine and the European Union is crazy. In Ukraine cigarettes are dirt cheap, but in European Union they are way more expensive. So the drones are used to deliver cigarettes across the border. I personally know the stories about the real airplanes flying from one side to another illegally. At least it was before the war. Now the airspace is well controlled, but by that time some of the pilots flown the small airplanes illegally. Just a few of them, but those cases were registered. And now the self-made drones are used. Very easy construction, really nothing special, but still it works. This is the huge Russian mall Oceania, and here you can see some of the screens with Putin's face with his address to people that was recorded today. Russia completely turned into the brainwashed country. If you watched Equilibrium, if you read George Orwell 1984, you understand what I mean. Propaganda from every corner, economy is shrinking down, but at the same time Russia spends extraordinary funds for the army and for the media sources to brainwash people and force them to fight for their leaders. What shocks me that most of Russians are still okay with that. My friends, please don't forget to press the like to this video. By doing so, you are supporting me a lot. And also, if you want to support this channel or my job, you may check out some of the links in the video description just below. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.